Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 One Club story from Hemel Hempstead Town with me, Daniel. It's part 19 of the Tudor Times today and we are back for two very difficult matches. We face the second and third place teams, both of whom are unbeaten at the start of the season and two of the sides that reached the playoffs last year as well in Chesterfield and Carlisle United. And for us, we've had a poor start, we're not in great form and today, you're going to witness a tactical experiment taking place, because if ever there's a time to try it, it's two games we probably would have lost anyway. So if you're looking forward to that, seeing me lose the plot and go for something completely out of the box, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. We've got videos every day at 3.30, so the head coach will be back tomorrow and Hemel Hempstead again on Saturday. And thank you to those who have supported the mobile series this week. You can find all the playlists, links and videos up in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel where we've got regular live streams. But we are back today to bring our experiment forward. We mentioned about going to a potential back three. We're going to have to do it. It's something I very rarely get to make work in FM. It obviously has been talked about this year with the introduction of wide centre backs and all of that jazz, but we haven't got players that are suitable for that. So for us, this is a patch together experiment to see if we can find our form. And more importantly, if we can produce a regular goal threat and stop conceding from set pieces, because on paper, we should be really strong from them. We've worked on getting a more physical side. and We're still conceding every single time. So we're going to give it a go against two of the top sides and keep an eye on it. But I think we can tell early this season if that doesn't work, it's going to be another mid-table year because we're going to lose plenty of games against the top sides. We've still not improved that attacking line enough. And against Mark Cooper's side today, I'm not confident. We'll see how it goes though. Let's start by looking at the schedule to see what's happened since you were last with me. You were here for the East League game. It all started okay to be honest. We played slightly weaker sides in Dagenham at home where Oliver Turner licked a late winner and has been really good this season. One of the few positive lights. We also drew away at Wrexham. Paul Mullin scored after an awful error from Dave Gregory. And then Victor Sedende got back after half time. We pasted Newport for 90 minutes, didn't take advantage, then let in from a corner, two minutes to go. And then away at Hartlepool, I don't know what to say. We were two up at half time, we were cruising. Sedende had scored two poachers' goals without us being great. And in second half, it fell apart. Dave Gregory made another absolute clangor, which was the winner in the 86th minute. And that's two in five games for him, which I've never seen before. So that tells me something's wrong with his side. We've tried to have a chat with the lads because the club atmosphere was awful. We've got it up to average. But really, the gelling of the squad after a lot of changes in the summer. People that are unhappy, still not able to get them out. Been trying to get rid of Aaron Simpson, hasn't worked. Dobson's in his final year with us. And we don't really look like we're going to succeed at any point. So it's going to be a very difficult spell. We're getting close to crisis point. But given the sides we've faced, it's not a big issue just yet. But based on the information from the data hub, the players we've got, and the version of the back three we wanted to change to, this is what we've now produced for moving forward. It does have the slight caveat today where three of the players coming into it have no match fitness whatsoever, but we're going to give it a try regardless. I put Kopecker in the middle of the back three because he's taller. I'm going to try and be imposing from set pieces. Not really got anyone who's comfortable playing on the ball in that back three. And I've taken a little bit of a, a gamble and something slightly different from what you see in a normal midfield three. Now, we had the option to play Oshie Young in the holding role or even a more de defensive central midfielder, to be fair, and just play with the two wing backs going forward and then maybe a few more protective legs more centrally. What I've decided to do instead, though, is go for defensive wing backs and play big through the middle. So if we can get the ball up to Cargbo and flick on for Sedende, we might have a chance of scoring a few. And in fact, I did say we were going to reduce the attacking width. I'm not sure if we're going to do that yet. I think we're going to focus on the first sort of hour or so, see how it goes, and then make a decision as we need to. Because for now, I just left the instructions exactly the same as our normal four at the back to try and make it as simple to switch as possible. I've talked before in detail about not making all the changes at once, and I feel like we'll gradually introduce things here. But long term, I think this could be our tactic because every summer so far, there have been loads of centre mids and centre halves available and virtually nothing of quality out wide. So if we can get a good striker or two in in future years, this could be the way forward for me. Having said all that, there's only one way to find out if it's going to be successful, isn't there? That's to play football matches. So we start today at home to Chesterfield. We're coming towards the international break, so we will be without some players anyway. But this 
is the lineup we're going for. You've seen it already. They've got some great players, Chesterfield. They obviously were flying the second half of last season under Mark Cooper, and he's continued to take them forward this year. So a lot of the wingers drop out of the squad. Dobson and Marsh Brown both out the squad entirely. Aguas and Fernandez on the bench in case we need them. In case we want to go back to our normal shape if it's an utter disaster. But for now, this is the 11 we're going for. We've got David Gregory between the sticks. He's had a really poor start and we've told him as well. Harvottle, Kapekwa and Brian Moore, the back three. Elliot Hewitt and Matthew Carson, the wing backs. Brooke Turner and Mantum, the midfield three. Brooke and Mantum running box to box. Turner, the attacking centre mid. So we're going to have basically a back five and then a front five. We want to separate the team in half. Sidende so and Cargbo up front, the first time we're seeing the big target man from the start. Can he deliver though? That's the question. We've got the set pieces adjusted. We feel we're ready for the big occasion. So let's go and face Chesterfield at Vauxhall Road. And cross our fingers, we can find some form. Well, there's one thing I've put so much focus on ahead of this game. And that is, I have changed all of the set pieces to pure man marking defensively. And we're going very targeted with our set pieces. We've got Cargbo and Capequa, six foot six and six foot four, and every set piece is going towards one of them if they follow our instructions. Now, we've only had one set piece session during the week. We've not been able to work on it a huge amount because I spent most of the time adjusting the shape. So I'm not sure how quickly we'll get it, but I want to be potent from set pieces. It's not going to be as pretty as we were in the National League South for sure, but I'm hoping it will be damn effective because Chesterfield early on in possession, in truth, we're not going to be able to judge this tactic on these two games, but I want to see positive signs and I want to steer stop conceding from set pieces. If I see that, I might be happy as they work down the left-hand side here, Chesterfield. Miller delivers, hard bottle clear and having three on one in a box helps. So then they lose the header though. I'd rather he aim for the big man at the other side as Sherring plays out from the back. The thing we've got to accept in this tactic is we're conceding a lot of possession. We're conceding a lot of width. If Ricard Pike gets in, it's all so easy. And I've got to be honest, as a penalty, he's been very softly given against Capequa. That is harsh. I've got to be really honest and say the first minute and a half there, the lads looked absolutely all over the place. Like, they didn't have a clue what they were doing. Might be a worrying sign moving forward as former Luton man Ollie Lee scores for Chesterfield. That's not the best start to this experiment, is it? Well, I will say, with just over 20 minutes gone, we've seen no highlights since that first awful 90 seconds. And the stats are pretty much level in terms of chances, so it's not necessarily a disaster. The problem is we did this to create better chances and stop conceding from set pieces. And I know it's a penalty, but we've conceded from a set piece and from the getting in behind out wide. And we've not created much as Gallagher crosses in, Miller's up. Oh, we nearly conceded a back post header. If their left winger is beating our centre half in the air, we might as well give up and go home. But here's the big test. Chesterfield corner, good header, Capequa. That's better. The man marking working a little until there. Second time Capequa gets it clear. But there were three players unmarked in the middle there. That is not good enough. And really not what we've set up for. I think next week might be all set piece working rather than tactical shape. But still we're in the game. It's a lot more defensive. It's a lot harder to understand if it's working or not. Because we're giving up possession and territory. But I'm just hopeful it can produce something here. As Rowley goes back to Clark. I think it is the long term solution. But... You know my phobia with a back three as Threeston gets down the left into the box to Capec Cruz. Missed it. Oh, we've conceded from a cross. One man loses out in the air. The next man, I don't even know what he was doing. He wasn't marking. This is going to be a very frustrating spell for us. You could argue that a poor start against very good teams wasn't a reason to change shape. Oh, we've lost another header. Why are we so bad from set pieces still? I couldn't have done more. I couldn't have done more to make sure these were set up right. And we're getting absolutely plastered. It's very hard to judge against the side that's unbeaten, particularly when we're severely lacking in confidence. But I can't say at this point that we look any better than we did in the back four. And if anything, we look significantly worse. So we might have to persevere for a few games, but I can't see this being the answer either as Carson wins it on the left to Sedende. Can we break away? There's not really any signs that we're playing to the tactics, so maybe it's just not been adapted to yet. As Harbottle to Carson. Still playing very short, which is unusual. Chips up. Cargbo's not even within 15 yards of that. I don't care what level of football you're playing at. It cannot be hard to guide a ball towards a six foot six target man. Put the ball near his head so he's got a chance to win it. It's across the box. It's a good block in the end. 
Elliot Hewitt back in as an auxiliary right back. We might have to adjust the midfield setup, maybe go for the more traditional defensive centre mid, and then perhaps have the two wingers a bit further forward. Certainly worth trying in the second half because this has been shambolic. We've got another set piece to defend here, and it's an experiment going wrong live as Clark puts it into the box. Oh my words, who was that marking him? Cargbo, the six foot six centre forward. You're kidding me. You're actually kidding me. How has he won that header? I'm furious. This is the worst we've ever played. I've done so much to make sure that if anything, I knew that the tactic might go wrong. It wouldn't look tip top yet. I put so much effort into the set pieces. And that is absolutely abysmal. Oh, I don't get it. I do not get it. Let's go and have a look at what we can do here. I'm just going to try for the second half to see if it works. I mean, it might be a one game experiment, this. It's certainly not ready to see the world yet. I might just try and see if we can play a slightly more defensive option. So maybe a deep line playmaker on defend for Turner. And then we'll just have someone sitting in the midfield and let the two wing backs bomb on because we've not had a threat at all there. And if anything, this has been the worst I've ever seen this side. So I think we might have to persevere with the back four and just accept that we're a low scoring team and we're going to lose the odd game. And we're going to be one of the lowest scorers in the league because this isn't the solution, is it? Though we've got a corner with Brook. Maybe we'll be a threat here. Up to Cargbo who ducks out the way. You're six foot six, man. Out to Brook again. Cuts it back to Capequa. He finds Brian War. I mean, I don't know where the threat is. It is so wrong on so many levels. Every instruction is off. Here is Cargbo, the target man. Lays it up. Block to Mantum, his shot's over. But it's a pop shot from 30 yards. We're not creating anything of substance. I'm going to make some changes because 25 to go. I am extremely unhappy. So let's go and substitute Mantum, who's on a booking. He'll be replaced by Bandera. We're also going to replace the left wing back Carson for Aguas. And who knows what else we can do. Cargbo anxious. I mean, you haven't even challenged for a header. What can you be anxious about? I don't really know what you've tried to do. I'm going to take off Brian Moore for Senga. Because at least they're three defenders that have played together before. But there are some big alarm bells here. I don't really know where the positive signs start. As it's a goal kick from Gregory. It's literally through to the other keeper. What was he aiming for there? We're about to see crisis time because, yes, I panicked too soon with the tactical change. I should have left it the couple of months I'd planned. But of all the things to go wrong, to concede from a cross and a, and a set piece as well, it's just devastating. To have your six foot six target man ducking out the way of things, it, it is a shambles. As Capecqua gets it at back again, it's a hard bottle. I'm going to give it one more game after this against Carlisle. If it's that bad again, we'll leave it. As Cargbo goes back to Brook, he finds Senga. I think the only positive is it's been a much more even game since we've gone to the traditional back three shape with a city midfielder and two wingers. That's a great shot from Bandera. The threshold's not high, but he might be working his way into the team here. He gets his goal despite not being technically great. And who knows, maybe the late comeback's on. We've got attacking wingbacks now. Aguas is a more naturally gifted attacking player anyway. But look at him straight down the wing. Gallagher gets to the byline, no pressure at all. Turner intercepts and clears. Now we're showing a bit of fight. Cargbo's doing my nutting. He's the top paid player at the club bar, Capequa, on loan. Oh, we've been done by a straight ball over the top. Don't know what Gregory was doing. And what's the point of a back three if they can't mark one striker between them? Honestly. Corner kick Chesterfield. I'm going to demand more as it's into the back post. Oh, it's another free header. Cargbo is losing every header. Jump in reach 18, 6 foot 6, has lost every single header. Oh man, this is arguably the most annoyed I've ever been in a Football Manager episode. Possibly ever, because it is so, so frustrating. The manner of which we've conceded the goals was the only thing I thought might be fixed by this. How Cargbo has got a 6.9 out of that, I don't know. What are they judging it on? He had some nice touches with his feet. Did he technically get the assist for the goal as well, perhaps? But in the air, the only threat he was there for, and he has produced nothing. We're now just one point clear of the relegation zone. Chesterfield go top. Carlisle stay unbeaten with a 0-0 order shot. And if we don't get a better performance against Carlisle with this tactic, I'm going to give up on it straight away. Until we can get a proper target man that's got some guts in the air. I'll see you in a minute.
Time for game two of two in our experiment. We go away to third place Carlisle. And this isn't about results. This is about performances. We have put so much effort into getting things set right. If we have a look at our set piece routines and I show you like the attacking corners for example. We've got Cargo at the near post and here's the focus of where the corners should go. The corners aiming for the near post, Cargo with the flick on, we've got the likes of Kopecker up there lurking at the near post too, we've got all of our big men on the end of it, apparently, but it's not happening. That's the bit that's missing at the minute. If we look at terms of defending set pieces such as the corner, six man markers, both strikers who are good in the air, three centre halves who are good in the air, and a right wing back Hewitt who's six foot one and decent, and Cargo. Why is he losing it? I know his heading's not bad, but the heading is directing a header, actually being able to, to choose where it's going. The jumping reaches the ability to get to the header, and for Cargbo, that's all over the shop. So if this does show some positive signs, I feel we're going to have to go in and get a proper experienced target man to make it work, because it's the only way I can see it being a success. We did have it briefly in sort of our head coach series. We've not really had a chance to try it anywhere else. Now, Brian War is listed as unavailable. Why is that? He is ineligible due to... Oh, he's played for the 18s. Oh, this is going from bad to worse. I'm focusing so much on the set pieces, I've forgotten the rest. Senga is on international duty. Carson is on international duty. We're a little bit short of defenders now. And this is where the back three goes wrong. Because I don't think I have another centre half. I'm going to have to... Bring in Simpson and put Hewitt to the third central defensive position. Ochieng was away, otherwise I would have dropped him in. He's come back and isn't fit yet. I'm going to go for Bandera in for Mantum. Get a little bit more youth and exuberance. Janae Mead a left wing back. In fact, we'll go Aguas left wing back. We'll try and create a bit more in terms of attacking dynamism. Barkers will come onto the bench for Ochieng. And then we'll bring on Marsh, Brown or no, Dobson. So we've got a natural left winger. Because I feel the back five tactic might end at some point in this game. We're going to put the wing backs permanently onto the supporting duties. Doesn't make much of a difference to our familiarity. And then Turner is going to be the deep line playmaker. We're going to cross our fingers. Because the only thing that can get us through here, I believe, is hope. Do we go for playing more centrally? It just notches down our familiarity slightly. But it is the best thing for us, I think. We'll give it half a game before deciding. Might have to do 45 minutes on each because I don't want to change it all too quick. Janae Mead gets the squad number. We go in to the Carlisle game. I need a positive performance. See, it says Hamzad Kargbo is tactically familiar with the formation. So he should know exactly what to do more than anyone here. And he's the one that hasn't shown that so far. It's a very good Carlisle team. McDonald and Whelan at centre half. Very good players. Timmy Abraham's up top. Some quality in midfield and on the bench too. I can't see this being easy. We're going to tell the lads that there's no pressure on them. We're going to try and get them motivated. But we've just got to see some positive signs. Fingers crossed we will. As early doors, we're in possession in the middle of the park. Turner turns. He finds Harbottle and out to Aguas. That's better. Can we get the ball into the box now? So then he's there. Nobody heads it. McDonald gets a free clearance in the end. And again, why is the target man not getting in the box there? And I know it looks like I'm picking him out. But he's the only one not really following any of the instructions and maybe it's just that he's not match fit and we'll see a real improvement soon but I wouldn't count my chickens on that one as it's chipped up Aguas heads away as far as Cropper gonna cross from the right hand side to the byline Capet quickly is away excellent defending Egan can pick it up again to Cropper back to Egan all possession for Carlisle but can they make something with it they certainly can like that hits the crossbar it's going to be cleared away but why has he got so much space on the edge? Six minutes gone, nil-nil. Not the best start again. 25 minutes gone. We've got a corner kick with Harry Brook in towards Cargbo. He's one ahead up. That's big progress. But the commentary says it looked easier to score than miss. And he missed by quite some considerable distance. No shots on target. What we've got to remember here, our defence was watertight last year. The reason we've changed this tactic is to become more of an attacking threat. And I have seen no evidence that that's going to be the case in this formation. I think, is it time to just accept? I mean, you can let me know in the comments what you think. Do we just, look, we said we didn't improve the front three as much as we like. And do we just have to accept it's going to be another season of mid-table and we'll try and push again next year and focus on getting in a good top three to make this team absolutely ruthless in front of goal. Because at the moment, 
All I think I've done is harm us a bit defensively. As Hewitt picks the ball up at the back. Chips forward, but there's no one there. I mean, it's aimless play, isn't it? We're not playing smart. We're not keeping the ball. We're not really counter-attacking with any threat. And we look a shambles at the back. And we've started giving away penalties every game. Why did I play Simpson? He's got a book in now. He's had an awful game anyway. Let's see if it can be put away from Stephen Hewitt. That will be the end of the experiment for now. Bye-bye back three. In we go to the 4-3-3. I'll be back in a moment once we've made the changes. So there's the penalty celebration. It is going to be a 4-3-3 now. Agras will stay left back. Hewitt right back. We've taken off Simpson who gave away that penalty. For him, we've brought on a winger in Fernandez. We've brought on Dobson on the left. He replaces Cargbo, the second striker. And then Barkas is on for Brook, who was the poorest in the midfield three. We're going to go positive. We're going to try and chase the game. We'll encourage the lads. But I think we can conclude that with 10 minutes to go here as one of the worst experiments we'll ever see on this channel, and something I probably shouldn't have done as an overreaction to the start of the season. I'm sure some of you were shouting at me before that I'd even started saying you shouldn't be doing this, because things were going along nicely, we just haven't got goal scorers, and that's life. As the ball goes over the top from Egan, Kopequa intercepts, him and Carbottle straight up to a 7 rating after going to a back 4. And I think that's all it is in truth. If we can get ourselves a good front three for next season, we can compete for the playoffs. For as long as we're competing with what are essentially National League North and South players, we're going to struggle to get any further than mid-table. But it will be a back four you will be seeing on the channel in future. That was certainly a failed experiment. And the problem is now, with four defeats in a row, I've got to somehow build the confidence again. We've got a slightly easier run of fixtures coming up. We'd said at the start this was an awful run of fixtures to start the season. But I haven't helped matters here. We're going to tell the lads we were pleased with the effort there. How long have we got off before the next game? And who can we get back into the team? We are one point and one place above the relegation zone. If Kingsland win their game in hand, we could fall into it for the first ever time since we got promoted. It's not a good sign on paper. What I do want to say though, we've played seven league games this season, okay? We've beaten Dagenham and Redbridge, who are 16th. The teams we've lost to in the last four games, Hartlepool, who are 8th, Newport, who are 5th, Chesterfield, 4th, Carlisle, 2nd. The teams that we've drawn against, 7th place Eastley and 12th place Wrexham, who were in the playoffs last season. So the only team we've played in the bottom half, we've beaten. I don't think it is a disaster. I think it just probably shows what the, the limit of our expectations should be this year. Last season was great. We had the momentum of coming up. We had a watertight defence. We had that confidence. And the little errors are starting to creep in now. We haven't got a good enough front three. We can't solve the problem unless we get better attacking players. If we can find them during the year, great, we'll make it a scouting mission. But for now, we'll go back to the back four. We'll accept that we're going to be good at the back and not great going forward. And we hope next time out when we play bottom place Maidenhead, we can start to recover this season. What we're going to do as a result of my tactical stupidity and of my impatience is come back at the start of next month. Because there's two more pretty big games on paper against relegated Swindon and a South End side who are professional and should be knocking at the door of the top seven. We're ahead of schedule. If we stay in the National League, everything's going to be fine. What we can focus on now, though, if we can get out of trouble in the next few weeks, is going on a little cup run, which would be nice financially. If you did enjoy this episode, though, the first proper meltdown of the season, I think we'd call it, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of that awful experiment and how far away from our team it should be for the rest of time. I did tell you I can't get a back three to work in FM, didn't I? We're not going to be seeing it again anytime soon. We are back to the trusted 4-3-3. If you're looking forward to seeing the rest of the season, whether we can get away from the relegation zone and recover from that awful start, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM22 content. We're back here with the head coach tomorrow at half three before this one returns on Thursday. And fingers crossed things will be looking slightly up. I'm going to try all the tricks with the player chats, try and get the confidence and morale boosted again. If you haven't already seen our other playlists or you have missed any of the content so far, you can find the links up in the eye above. But a massive thank you for watching, for joining me for this crazy experiment gone wrong. And I'll see you next time as hopefully we can start to bring a bit of normality back in this save.